that everybody to this day still talks about. The sensor medic family culture run, I can attest, still lives on in this building and around the world. We still talk about the vision of the company that you created and the culture that you created going forward. That's number one. Number two is customer first. None of this would have been possible without the customer being at the center of the universe. And to me, for that, I'm going to turn to Maya Angelou, who said, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But they never will forget how you made them feel. And that quote is so important for customers because Sensormatic was known as the company that, from a loss prevention point of view, put the customer on a pedestal. That customer was critical to the company, and by the way, they became part of the extended family. They became part of our family, and the same culture that we had inside the company was extended to our customer base. We had a unified business and a unified approach to the market, and customer first strategy really created a unique, very unique culture, really not duplicated anywhere in the world, when your customers actually are buying into your culture and support your company in terms of, of believing what you do and supporting you as a company on a go, on a go forward basis. And the third one is teamwork. And teamwork, I'm gonna go to Henry Ford. And Henry Ford said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. And really to me, that's what it was all about. All of us in the early days, and I was lucky enough to join in the 90s, really in the, in, the, in the areas that was the best part of my career. I tried, I learned, I embraced, I tried new things, new technology. Really that teamwork of getting stuff done was immersive. When everybody was in it to win, everybody was there to make sure that the customer won with us. And it was an unbelievable ride. It's one of the best part of my career that I still tell people today, if I had to recreate it, that's the part of my life I want to refine. That's the part of my life, those years that are so energizing to the rest of us. So again, a really great part of our life. So honoring our past, but really we're starting to celebrate our future. My humble beginnings were with a product called Possum. <laughs> and you survived. And I survived. <laughs> So that's a little picture right there. That's all the growth that we're running to do. So I still get today questions about what does possum stand for. I'm not going to go there. Anyway, that's my beginning in terms of that. So celebrations are important, but celebrations are important when they're about people. We really are here to celebrate all of you. And unfortunately, we cannot read everyone that is here in terms of names. So what we thought we'd do we celebrate the folks that have been here the longest, the people that are still part of the Sensormatic family. And you're going to be surprised by the number of years that these four individuals wanna, we're actually going to name. So the first one, Julie Ford, come on up. And 
our number one employee that's been here the longest, 39 years. Unbelievable. Carol Stone. So this is where it all started. Um, back in, uh, what was it, 85? Um, we started out with, with uh, JKR. And that was named for John Welsh's kids. Let's see, that was um, Jack, Karen, and Randy. Uh, and that started the whole thing off. It was a microwave system. Microwave, it's 915 megahertz. You use a diode to modulate things. And it worked kind of OK. Uh, the tag, as I understand it, was the size of a dinner plate. Not a large tag. Um, but it was a good theft deterrent. <laughs> and it's hard to hide under your arm. But in order to try and sell things, uh, Ron and, and John rented a DC-7. And they stuck you know, tags in a DC-7 and a system in a DC-7. Now, for any of you guys, took all the guts out of it, basically. And they flew around the country trying to get people to buy this new innovation. Well, for those of you that know anything about technology, 900 megahertz inside this metal tube works great. It's a way you've got it. You, know, you can't get away from it no matter what you do. So it, it made a great sales job. And I think you made an impression on some people. But there was still this difficulty. You see down there, 20 systems installed in about the 1968, late 68. Um, all of them were for free except one. Uh, so Ron was actually. Yes. Hmm? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So kind of for free, all of them. Uh, but it was a great idea. And the key is Ron persevered. I mean, it was a hard sell. And you can see this thing didn't immediately, oh, he had a great idea, it immediately took off and flew. No, it took a long time. So 
you know, went to went to Akron, Ohio, moved the manufacturing there down to down to Florida finally, uh, with 25 people at that point. Uh, and just after that, we started getting competition. You got uh, Checkpoint. Well, previous to that, you had a little bit, but you had Checkpoint with their swept RF system. And you know something? The swept RF system, uh, when you deactivate the tag, uh, first of all, it's an 8 megahertz system, but when you deactivate the tag, you short out the tag. It wasn't until about 1998 that anybody ever figured out how that deactivation worked. Because what they would literally do is, is there's a you know, conductor on the bottom, conductor on the top. They put a hot mandrel down onto the, the tag and literally short it out. And then when they pulled the mandrel off, the plastic would shrink and it would separate it so it didn't short out, at least most of the time. Probably 15, 20% of the tags shorted out in manufacturing. And another 20 or 30% didn't deactivate at all. And it took years and years and years to actually figure that out. And, and we were actually part of that. So you see up there at 72 Bloomingdale's, I guess they were the first real customer that we had. But the problem is, uh, along about 72, Sensormatic was still losing money. $14 million at that point. Peanuts by today's standards. Um, and then right after that, it turned profitable. Which is good. So along about this time, we start getting multiple technologies. Um, this thing called P-Magnetics. Most of the people in here may have never heard of it. Dr. Arlo, I know you've heard of them. And the old P-Gates. P stands for permaloy. Permaloy is a, uh, a material, it's a crystalline material. And it makes really nice short tags. The whole idea was to use it in grocery stores and places like that. The problem is if you bend the tag, the material is a bit like tin foil. It kinks. And once it kinks, it's no good. So it took a long time before we actually went to something called amorphous material, which is not crystalline. It actually worked much better. But that was probably 10 years after that. The, one of the initial implementations of that system, because keep in mind it was for grocery stores, was a gate system. So you got these two gates. And the idea was you had to get close to the gates for the thing to go off. So you literally had to push your cart through the gates. And guess what? After not too many times pushing through those gates, literally hitting them all the time, they broke. So that was a, um, a bit of a challenge. Uh, I remember a guy by the name of Marty Martinson, a mechanical engineer, was pulling his hair out over that. But, so we come along to, uh, you know, let's see, the 83-ish time frame, and such a man was starting to grow, became the darling of Wall Street, it's one of those you can do nothing wrong, and you can see how the uh, 84, 85 growth of sales got up to 67 million. You know, it was really going great. And then guess what? We had, the, we had crisis after crisis, the problems. People started to back off. Keep in mind, we really didn't have good technology back then because the, the, the old microwave systems were a bit marginal at that point. The P systems didn't work too well. But we were, Ron was doing a great job, and your team doing a great job of selling. And things kind of crashed down, as you can see. Um, and then along about um, 85, Ron brought in a guy who still works for us, incidentally, uh, as a consultant, Olin Giles. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you brought Olin in because you felt like there were some technical issues that maybe Olin could help fix. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he brought in a team of guys, and uh, I have to be one of those that he brought in. And that began, that was the beginnings of the, the turnaround of the system. Also, you can see up here that we were starting to diversify just before this. So you got Easy Bar, Data Vision. Data Vision was a very visionary product. It was self-checkout. They used, um, I guess you call them DVDs, uh, but they were 12-inch platters, looked like records, that stored all the visual information on it. Uh, and it did work. It measured the, measured the produce, weight, color, size, all that kind of stuff. Um, but never really caught on. And you notice self-checkout is just now catching on. Um, Easy Bar. It's an interesting story. Easy Bar was actually my first uh, introduction into Sensormatic. I had no clue I was going to work there. 
because my uncle lived in West Palm Beach and he rang, I shouldn't tell this, he ran a bar uh, called the uh, Pink Tiger. And they had one of these. Uh, and it actually worked. So I remember sitting in his bar watching this thing. It was kind of neat. But it didn't catch on. Yeah. Okay. So um, at this point in time, this is back in the 85 ish time frame, still expanding. ID systems, so now we have an RS system. So we've got magnetic systems, we've got RS systems, we've got microwave systems, um, and really starting to, to move. Then along, in a, well, about that time, we uh, also, it doesn't say up here, I don't believe, but we created the, what we call the J system. J stands for Japan. Japan system was to be a replacement for the old P magnetic system because it used a special wire. So instead of this strip, he used a tiny little wire 